Hello, Kidney Warriors! James here from Dadvice TV, your online kidney health coach. And this is another great episode of Dadvice TV Live. Now, for those of you who are new, welcome. Great to have you here. Let me quickly introduce myself. My name is James. I was diagnosed with stage five kidney failure many, many years ago, four years ago. And I have worked on my overall health. That's not just my physical health, but also my mental health to help me manage my kidney disease and become very proactive in my care. And by doing so, I feel like I'm in control and I've been able to make a lot of improvements. So many improvements that people who see me can't believe that I was diagnosed with stage five kidney failure and told I would need a transplant and dialysis. And I never did any of those. Right now, I'm doing great with diet and everything else, working with my entire healthcare team to stay as healthy as possible. Now, tonight, we're going to be talking about one of the things that my doctor always asks me about. As a matter of fact, it's the very first thing that my doctor always talks to me about whenever I have an appointment. And those of you who are regular uh, viewers of Davice TV, you know exactly what my doctor always talks about first. It's James, how are you? How is work? How is the family? What stresses are you dealing with? You got any anxiety? We talk about all of that first before we start getting into kind of the nerdy stuff I like to call it, the labs and the numbers and things like that. Because managing stress, anxiety, and all that is so important to helping me stay positive and in control of the things that I'm managing with my disease. Now today, to help us talk about this, we have a wonderful expert all the way over. She's still living in a wonderful place. You guys know Hawaii. Oh, I would love to be there right now. It would be great. But please welcome, give a great big giant, Dad Vice TV welcome, Lana Lai. Hey, Lana. Hey, everyone. It's good to be back. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> it feels like it has been so long. It has been a little bit. It's been a very busy summer for you, for me, and I feel like everybody else. We've all just, we blinked and it's over. <laughs> yeah. Now, for those that are new, can you tell them a little bit about your background? Yeah, most definitely. So I am a licensed clinical social worker. I have a background in community health. Um, I've worked in hospitals, nonprofit kidney agencies, um, skilled nursing facilities, and a, a number of different places where um, the big focus is people's health care, chronic conditions, that kind of thing. Um, and my role as a licensed clinical social worker has been to help marry the physical health conditions that you may have and the mental health conditions that you may have um, and being able to manage all of those things. So at this point, I do have a private practice and I see clients all day, every day who you know are living with chronic conditions such as chronic kidney disease and really just need some help with coping and figuring out how to you know get their resources in place and, and all of those kinds of things. So this is one of my favorite things to do is, you know, help people and get their resources and stuff together. So really, really happy to be here and, and to share what I have with you all. Awesome. And tonight we are going to talk about anxiety and some kind of thermometer. Yes. The anxiety <laughs> thermometer. <laughs> the anxiety thermometer. Oh my goodness. I probably know so many people that that thing would be like pegged out probably. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so I have a, I have the, uh, like a template on that I can share. Um, it also, I don't know if I can share my screen or how I will that would share be it on mine. Okay. Let me, let me get it separated here. Now, now you're looking at the thermometer, the, how I feel. Yes. Okay. Yes. Let me bring that up here. And while James, you are looking at that, there's also a link on my website. Um, so if you wanted to download it and work along, or if you wanted to download it later, um, you can go to Honu Therapy, H O N U Therapy.com backslash shop. And then right in the middle of the page, there is um, a little sign up that takes just a couple of seconds. All right. Now I think I can share. Oh, I know a couple ways to share this. 
I'm just going to drag it on top of the screen. Where did I put it? I just took a screenshot of it. Let me find it here on my desktop. There it is. Here we go. Now, I might, it might be all centered. I'll get it all fixed. Okay, it's a little too big. <laughs> Let me shrink this puppy down. Oh, wrong one. <laughs> Let's see. Where did I put that? All right, I made it disappear. I made us disappear. There it is. Technology, isn't that always the best? I yeah, enjoy it. Try it a different way. <laughs> yeah, that one, I took a screenshot, but it's very vertical. So it zoomed way in. All right, let me go to... Da, 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 da. Or is, is it on your website? That'll be easier. It is, yeah. All right, let me go to your website. And we'll bring that up. And go ahead and talk while I'm pulling this up. Absolutely. So... On. So while James is pulling up the um, the anxiety thermometer worksheet, just to give you a little bit of background. So I actually use this a lot with my clients um, because anxiety is a normal part of life and we experience it daily, I guess, to different degrees, some people more so than others. And anxiety is such a, a big, broad concept. So when I say, oh, I'm feeling anxious, that can mean so many different things. It can mean so many different things any given day. And it also might be different from maybe how you experience anxiety. So when I say that I'm anxious, I might be overwhelmed and I may not be able to know in the moment what it is that I'm feeling, maybe what brought the anxiety on, and then what I can do to help bring that anxiety down. Um, so I know if you go online and you you know type in, ways to calm anxiety or how to, you know, manage anxiety. There's a number of really, really great ideas out there, um, but they're not always something that you would want to do. Maybe it's not something you have uh, the ability to access. And then it also might not be something that is applicable in the moment. So when James pulls up the thermometer, it so will- I'm having show... trouble finding that. I, I'm on oh, your website. So I'm so sorry. Here, let me get it pulled up. Hey, this shows yeah. everyone we're live. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's it's the nature of it, and it happens, and we will well, get it sorted. Well, this will help them know how to find it, too. Absolutely. So if you get on my website, yep. go to honutherapy.com. Uh -huh. And then go over to um, resources all the way on the right. It should be yep. up in the top right corner. And then there's a drop down and it's under stuff I love. I did not you, look there. I wasn't clear in my direction. <laughs> <laughs> if you if you click on stuff I love. I found, oh wait, there it is. Oh, I put in my name. Matt, yeah, so you put in, you scroll down, not even halfway, um, and there's a little box there. Put your name and email address in, click the button, it'll go right to your email address, um, and then you open the email, click on the link, and it automatically opens it up for you. All right, there it is. Got the link. Now, I got to do a little bit of working to share here. You know what's funny? I actually, I changed the background. You see the background around the edges a little different? Yeah. I deleted the one that shared my browser. So let's create one. We're going to go right here. We're doing this on the fly. This is okay, you keep talking. You're going to bounce around the screen as I do this. Not a problem. I will get, I will get it up here on the screen. <laughs> okay, so anxiety. Um, again, it feels different to everyone. Um, you know, there are very common symptoms of anxiety um, that you can you can Google and, and it'll pull up for you, like maybe um, irritability, difficulty concentrating, um, having trouble worry or having trouble um, with stopping worry, all of these things. There's many, many different ways that anxiety can show up. It can show up even by like shutting down, by like needing to leave, um, not wanting to talk to people that kind of thing. So again, this thermometer is a really, really good tool because when I am feeling like a low level of anxiety, um, 
it's easier for me to be able to tap in and maybe kind of mitigate some of that anxiety. Whereas if I was at like a very, very high level of anxiety, I might need something more, um, more drastic or more like intensive in the moment. I got it. Yes. Just so everyone knows that was my bad. I had sent James everything a little late. So (laughs) thanks for being flexible. Hey, it's, it helps me remember where things are in this tool. And I absolutely love it. It was easy to put that all together. Awesome. Well, yeah. So, okay. So we see the, you see this, uh, the worksheet here and it's fillable. So if you wanted to like type in on your own, that's totally fine. Um, but so if you look in the middle and you look at the thermometer, right, it's at the very bottom, you have a rating of zero. And so at the bottom, it is feeling relaxed. It's feeling calm, no stress, no anxiety. You're just enjoying everything. As we start to move up the thermometer, you, it goes from zero to 10. Um, and so each of the different ratings may feel a little bit heavier or may feel a little bit more um, like physically demanding or emotionally demanding. So when we get to a five, you know, like you're probably like, maybe not feeling too great. Um, a lot of times when people are maybe at a four or a five, they're able to still do what they need to do. Um, it doesn't necessarily interfere with if they're talking to somebody or if they're at work or, um, you know, trying to get through traffic, right? It doesn't necessarily get in the way of those things. It just is a little uncomfortable. As we get up higher, maybe towards like a six or a seven, we do start to notice that we have like sweating or, um, you know, just uh, heart racing, your mind is racing, and it's actually becoming much more physical and it's harder for you to ignore. And that is the point where it tends to be disruptive for you being able to get things done. Um, Then we get all the way up to a 10 and that is super, super high anxiety, probably some of the highest anxiety you've ever felt. So if we are kind of looking at this on different levels, if you're trying to remember what does very anxious mean, think of the highest anxiety you have ever felt in your life. And that's going to be where that is. Any questions so far? Let's see. None, none yet. Somebody okay. asked, could you repeat your, your, uh, URL and there it is right there on the screen. Hanutherapy.com. Did I pronounce that right? You sure did. Yay! <laughs> Celebrate the small victories. Celebrate the small victories. <laughs> Absolutely. Um so so again, um when we start at the bottom, right? Like that is very calm, that's very relaxed. Um at the top when we're at a 10, that is like super, super anxious, um, where we are not able to really get anything done at all. We are definitely probably approaching a panic attack or an anxiety attack and just completely shut down. So the way that this thermometer is helpful is if I say I am really anxious, really anxious, what does that mean? Um, when we take it to maybe a number like, when I am at a seven for me, like when my anxiety gets to a seven, I am definitely sweating. And so I am forced to pay attention at that point because I'm like, oh my gosh, something is going on. And so it helps me to be able to check in and say, okay, I'm at a seven. Where do I feel this in my body? How do I know that I'm at a seven? My heart's racing, I'm sweating. I'm usually pretty cranky when I'm around that level. I cannot focus, you know, all of those kinds of things. And so when I'm at that seven, I'll also ask myself, why am I feeling this way? Right? So I'm, I've felt this way before I'm sweaty. I'm irritable. Why am I feeling this way? Sometimes you may not know in the moment, um, but if you are recognizing that you felt this physical sensation before, it helps to give you a pattern for the last time I felt this way, um, I stubbed my toe on the coffee table and I broke the coffee table, right? So there are good patterns that you can check into to help kind of give you understandings of what your triggers might be. So I just spoke a lot. Do you have any questions about any of that so far? Let's see. Someone we have a we have someone who's actually can relate to what you're talking about. Uh, 
he, he says, you know, when you were talking about getting closer to a 10, he said that's the one he's suffering with. Um, we got another comment from Life with Bev Brown. Um, I called a panic attack. I don't know how to deal with it, but now I'm dealing with it. She's using her faith and I'm sure her friends and those around her to help her. Absolutely. And so this is also why it's very, very important that you, which we'll get to, um, that you check in with the things that help you feel grounded and secure. And so for some people that is going to be their faith, um, their spirituality, you know, their connection with like a higher power or, you know, with, um, energy, that kind of thing. Like everybody is is different. And then for others, it's going to be something that is completely different. So I'm glad that you have something that you are able to tap into. Um, and we will definitely come back to that. Um, okay. So I don't see any questions so far. Um, so I hope that means that I'm making sense. Um, okay. So then when we are looking at the thermometer, um, it also gives us an ability to be more mindful and check in with our bodies more consistently. So when I said, when I'm at a 70 or like a six or a, six or a seven, um, I am usually sweating, I'm irritable, that kind of thing. I'm definitely paying attention to that because my body is highly activated with anxiety and it's making me listen. Um, but I may not be listening to my anxiety when it's down at maybe a two or a three, which is really when we should be checking it because that, that can help us a lot of the time, um, bring that anxiety down before it gets to that six or that seven higher and higher and higher. So that is partially why I think that this thermometer, um, is a really great useful tool to have just to also help us check in with our bodies more consistently, not just when our anxiety is really, really high. Now I have a question and you may have talked about this and I missed it while I was fidgeting around here. Um, What is the difference between anxiety and stress? Mm, That's a good one. So, so anxiety and stress, like those terms are often used like synonymously. Um, Like though they're, what I mean synonymous um, is interchangeably a lot. So it, it is, something like, oh my gosh, I'm so stressed. I can't focus, can't think. Um, stress is like gen- generally feeling like uneasy. Um, it's feeling like, you know, there's just kind of a lot going on. Um, stress, we're like, mm, you know, maybe there's like an end date. Like I, I know things will um, be okay once, you know, we get done moving or, uh, you know, once I graduate, like that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Anxiety is often tied with fear and worry um, and difficulty with feeling like we have control over things. So a lot of times um, when we're anxious, we may not know why. We may just be worried something bad's going to happen. Um, we may be worried that you know our best friend didn't answer the phone because they don't like us and we have no evidence for that. Uh, but these are things that start to kind of creep in and they they tell us things that may not be true, but it's it's really based in fear, uh, worry, lack of control, that kind of thing. That's a great question. So if someone was fearful, like last year, you know, I ended up losing my job, and I had a lot of fear of got to pay the mortgage, got mm-hmm. car payments. Uh, my, my biggest fear was health insurance. Oh my goodness, it's. I first, it's so expensive even with insurance, but when you're suddenly on Cobra, um, so I'm guessing that was all anxiety because that was all fear. How am I going to afford these things? How are we going to keep going? I've got to also find a new job, which mm-hmm. I did, but it required relocating, which I'm at the very tail end of. Um, and I actually love where we picked to live and all that. And it ended up being so much more better than the environment we were in and the life that we had, but I didn't see that at the at the time. It, it was very mm-hmm. I was very worried about the future. What yeah. was it going to be? So I'm guessing that was the anxiety, not really not stress. Yeah, and I think you can't. That is a very stressful situation that can cause anxiety. So we can be in something. I think that's a perfectly normal experience to lose your job. You know, be concerned with health insurance 
What does this mean for my kiddos? And then we start to kind of spin out and worry about all these other things, which definitely is an appropriate response to very big basic life needs, right? Like being able to have access to income, food, shelter, um, healthcare, all of those things. And so it is when we get to um, start to think about things that we just absolutely can't control in the moment. There's no like, um, th there's really no way to like shut it off. There's, it's starting to impact our function. That's when like the change becomes uh, more anxiety. Does that make sense? Yep. So, you guys yeah, can so see anxiety... right there what my chat looks like <laughs> as I was replying to someone. <laughs> yeah, so that that's a great sense. question. <laughs> that, yes, that's a great question. And so, so yeah, it's both, it causes, you know, a rise in our body. Um, and like stress does tend to be more short-term um, than, than anxiety, if that makes sense. But it yeah. presents it itself um, differently for everybody. And for me as a kidney patient, the biggest, I, I could feel it, of course. I knew mm -hmm. I was going through all this and, and you know, difficulty sleeping, which is not good for your health. But probably mm -hmm. the biggest impact for me, which is a serious impact for those with kidney disease, was my blood pressure was elevated. It was still being controlled with my medication, but it was elevated. My doctor was keeping an eye on it in case he needed to up the medication because high blood pressure, the number two cause of permanent kidney damage. Um, and I know now, now my blood pressure is great. I'm so relaxed and chill, sitting outside, enjoying the breeze and the weather and all that. But I didn't see that positive future back then. And, you know, it was challenging yeah, absolutely. for me. Yes. And so anxiety gets a bad rap because everyone's like, oh gosh, I don't want to feel anxious. Oh, anxiety is a, a bad thing to have. But anxiety is actually is part of your body trying to survive. It's trying to keep you safe. And so the brain goes into this, you know, overdrive. Okay, I've got a plan. Um, I've got to figure all these things out. So it's actually very adaptive um, to have anxiety. It's a matter of to have fear and to have concern and worry about the future it's it's when it goes beyond helpful and motivating in a sense where it can become like debilitating it may not be grounded in um, reality like like i'd given the example earlier of you know when i call my my best friend and they don't answer there's got to be something wrong with me they don't want to talk to me which is a common one that i hear um, you know, with folks who live with like social anxiety and, you know, my best friend's never given me a reason to think that. And so that part isn't necessarily grounded in reality. Like I have no facts, no proof. Mm -hmm. It is just that story that I'm kind of telling myself that anxiety that I'm having, that I'm not good enough or something's, something's off that kind of thing. Oh, I know two people with that exact same challenge where, mm -hmm something happens and in their mind it becomes worse and worse and there's no evidence to back any of that up but it just mm -hmm. seems like an uncontrollable snowball in their mind and as time goes on it's getting worse for them until they can you know resolve it by finding out kind of i want to say the truth because um, mm -hmm. their mind was making up a whole different story and it was it was weighing on them mm -hmm. And then you're not you're not thinking clearly because it feels like the anxiety feels so real that you're like my oh my gosh like because i feel this way it's got to be true you know there's why would i feel this way if if it wasn't true and so we tend to spend all this time kind of spiraling and finding all the reasons to believe that to be true rather than taking a step back and checking to see okay what's the evidence right so um, if you were in court, right? So pretending you're a lawyer and in front of a judge and a jury of your peers, what evidence do you have that your friend doesn't like you anymore, right? What evidence do you have that you're not good enough or, you know, any, anything like that? And so we don't spend the time. We're not, tr we're not taught how to do this, um, to examine our thoughts. Um, and not just assume that because we're thinking something or we're feeling something that it's automatically true. So feelings aren't facts. That makes sense. Yep. 
Now, uh, now we've had a couple comments about panic attacks. Um, mm. Is that a normal stage? If you, you know, if you get to that level ten, that panic attack, panic attacks can set in, or is that something else that can cause those panic attacks? So it can be caused by a number of things. There are some people who can get to a really, really high level and never experience like a severe panic attack um, or to the same degree that somebody else has. And there are others who it, it just comes on um, and that's, it goes zero to a hundred every single time. And by that point, your body is, is shutting down. So it's, it's, the body being at its most extreme form um, and responding to some type of stress that it is trying to get back to homeostasis. It's trying to get back to um, to being safe and to um, being calm. So if you are having a panic attack, there's no ignoring that, right? You're, mm -hmm. You may be breathing heavily. Um, some people get like really nauseous. Some people have like uh, upset stomach and other stuff like that that happens. Um, severe, severe worry. And you can't ignore that, right? So your body is telling you something is not okay and it is forcing you to listen. And there's a number of like biological and neurological things that, you know, go into that, um, you know, that it's, it's not as uh, simple as I'm describing it at this point, but it really, really is the body's way of trying to deal with whatever is coming your way, whatever's making it feel like you're not able to overcome the situation. Yep. Got it. All okay. right. I'm going to bring back up the thermometer. There yes. we go. Okay. So if you are okay with it, I'd like to do some examples because I think that would be helpful to kind of make the thermometer, um, something that you can kind of think about on your own, um, you know, after we're done talking today. So when I was talking about being at a zero, um, relaxed and calm for me, when I'm relaxed and calm, I don't have a care in the world. I am not worried about checking the time, you know, I'm just maybe like swing. I have a, a fantastic rocking chair on my porch, just sitting out there, just kind of letting that go. You know, if you can think about for you, what is feeling relaxed and calm, check in with your body, maybe check in with experiences you've had or memories you have of being relaxed and calm. That would be what you put um, down for, for zero. And then getting to one, um, you know, one, two, that's where it's like, ah, you know, uh, I'm forgot my keys. I got to run back in the house and grab them. Um, it's not something that is, is really, really spicy. Um, but when you're at a one or a two, a lot of the times we're not necessarily paying attention to it, but it might be like a little more alertness, like, darn it, I got to find the keys. Um, not a big deal. Find them. And we go about our day. Um, as we get up to like a three or a four, um, that is getting to the point where, um, you are noticing maybe a little bit of, of worry or anxiety, um, not necessarily like sweating or having any physical symptoms, but you're able to still kind of move on. Um, maybe running a little bit late and you are behind on a deadline and you recognize that you've got to get it in, but you're not, um, it's not stopping you from getting it done. It's, it's like, okay, we've got to focus, got to get this taken care of. Um, any examples you can think of, of maybe being at, not at like a pretty high level of anxiety, but like a, where you've been stressed to the point where it's not interfering with your function, um, but you're maybe noticing it a little bit. So Tyrone here mentioned one that causes anxiety for him that almost everyone listening has, and it, it, it's borderline interrupting and it is waiting for lab results. No matter what, I know my labs are gonna be fine when I go in and I, they draw the blood, but waiting for those results to come in on my phone. And if it's a Friday, you're like, oh no, I don't get the results till Monday. Yes. Your mind starts going, what if, what if my B, what if this number's up? What if this number's down? Uh, mm -hmm. what, uh, what if that dropped? What does that mean? and you think about it, 
you start to worry about it constantly yes. in the back of your mind. Even I've even watched entire TV shows. And, and I like to think of myself as so calm, but I'll watch entire TV shows and I do not remember one thing about it because all I was mm -hmm. doing was thinking about it. And what all, what all have I done in the last week? Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. I shouldn't have ate that. I know, oh, darn it. Why did I eat that? I should have got into walking more. I did, I'm not walking enough. All that is going on in the back of my mind. And I would say that to me, that sounds like I'm in that, I'm on the borderline of it interrupting my mm -hmm. activities. It's still kind of in the back, but it is starting to interrupt things. I, I go, I drive places. I don't remember anything. I'm like, did I, did I stop at that stop sign? I must have, but I don't remember it because I'm, it's just happening and I'm thinking about it. But I think most people here, yeah, we have Kelly says me too. I think all of us, um, yeah, we got Sydney says the same thing. This is something for kidney patients that kind of gets us in that middle to just a little over. Okay. And that is a really, really great example. So i if we can continue to use that going forward, I think that would be really helpful. So, so the reason why I stopped at like a three and a four, instead of continuing to go on is because again, we may, we may have an awareness, you know, I've got some, something really stressful coming up, you know, I don't know about my labs, you know, so that's like that anticipatory anxiety where you're waiting um, and you don't know, it's kind of out of your hands. And so if you're having that low level of anxiety, you know, of being under a five, that's probably not something you're necessarily focusing on. And so when you become really snappy and cranky and irritable and you find yourself being at a seven, um, you're, how did I get here? Why am I so cranky? Why am I so irritable? But that is a lot of the times because we already have some anxiety going on in the body that we are not able to maybe notice, we're not able to pay attention to. And so if you're worrying about your labs and as time goes on over, you know, the weekend where you're getting crankier and crankier with your kids, or, you know, just nothing seems to go right. You know, you're, um, numbing out and saying, I can't remember watching shows or I ate a bunch of, of cake. Um, you know, you're kind of wondering how did I get here? That is because we are not trained to check out our bodies more consistently at the lower levels of anxiety. And you know what's is odd? That this is, that's exactly what happens. And I want to be honest for every, everyone out there knows it. This happens every <laughs> single time. It never <laughs> does not happen. Every single time I get labs, I go through the same thing. And then it turns out okay. And I'm like, oh, I'm not going to worry anymore. I'm not going to let this get me, you know, Mm -hmm. sit there in my head and, and all that anymore. But every time it does. Yes. Yeah. So for instance, um, I, I can give an example. So our family's in the middle of moving. Um, my brother is one of our roommates and moved to our new place ahead of us. And so I, we were sitting on the porch the day before he left, just enjoying time, you know, spending time together. And I realized I was yelling at him. He hadn't done anything. I wasn't mad at him, but I was mad. And a friend of mine who was also a social worker um, pointed out that I was yelling. Um, and I said, I don't, I don't understand why. And it's because I was having anxiety about my brother leaving, but I had not been able to check in with that because my anxiety had not reached the level where I was being snappy and cranky um, over nothing. It was over, I think, a pack of bacon or something very, very simple, um, not a big deal kind of stuff. So had I been able to check in with that sooner, um, probably wouldn't have yelled at him. So did apologize and everything's fine. But um, just another example of kind of like how that shows up where you're not sure why this is happening, how it got to this point. But it happens to all of us. Yeah, And, and my wife can tell, especially if it's a weekend, and mm -hmm. I try never to get labs on a Friday just because of that. But sometimes that's when I can get off work and, or, you know, I had the free time to go in and that's when the appointment is, but she can tell on the weekend, like your results didn't come in yet. Did they like, no, mm -hmm. what in the world are they doing? Don't they know what they're yeah. putting us through? Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. 
and then you're frustrated and oh. don't want to talk to anybody, or you may even want to call them and, you know, pound them or maybe be short with them. There's yes, absolutely. So, so again, um, checking in with this more frequently to figure out for yourself, okay, how do I know when I'm at a three or a four? What does that feel like? When can I remember that happening? Um, and then writing that down. So I also have my clients along with this. I have them when they're learning how to do this, I have them set an alarm to where they log it, um, you know, a couple times a week, maybe a day where they don't have work and a day they do have work like every hour on the hour, or we come up with something that works for them to where they're able to kind of get in that habit of checking in with the body, no matter what it's at. So that way you're not just looking at your body when it's forcing you to. So if I say, let's schedule this, you know, do a log every, you know, hour on the hour on Tuesday, 9 a.m. I was at a 20, 10 a.m. I was at a 20, three o'clock in the afternoon, I got up to a 60. Um, that allows you to kind of be more mindful and more intentional about how this kind of ebbs and flows throughout the day. And that sounds like that'd be a great way to do this with a child who's having trouble with yes. anxiety by checking in throughout the day and asking them kind mm -hmm. of where they are. Yeah. And for, for kiddos, um, you can do something like this. They have a number of these kinds of thermometers online for kiddos that are, um, maybe have like emojis on them or those when you go to the doctor and it's got the, the different yeah. faces where it's like sad, you know, super crying, happy, that kind of thing. They have a number of really good ones. And so what you can do is you can, um, have them label like primary emotions. Um, you can do this with other emotions other than anxiety, but you can do this with, um, I'm feeling maybe kind of scared or kind of worried or kind of nervous I'm feeling really nervous, um, that kind of thing. And kids, they don't necessarily tend to notice thoughts per se, um, or maybe able to understand thoughts because of the nature of their development, but they can say like, wow, my tummy really hurts. Um, I, Ooh, I don't want to go and, and do that. Like I, Ooh, I feel, I feel kind of scared. And so using like very, very basic language with them, like scared, worried, upset, sad, frustrated, um, that kind of thing. And, and trying to figure out maybe what their very, very basic body functions are trying to tell you like upset tummy is, is a big one for kids. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, so definitely check that out. That talking to ch children about it. And when you just explain that checking in in a diary, it clicked. Aha. That sounds like mm -hmm. a good way to do this with children. Yeah. And for kids, you know, for, for anybody, but for kids, especially, you know, big emotions can feel really scary and they don't necessarily have the language to know what to do with a big emotion they have. And so it's great that you're interested in wanting to know how to help your kiddos. Um, and that also helps you as the caregiver to be able to kind of identify things maybe as it's happening. Um, kids can go to a meltdown, you know, in no time. We all with kiddos know that, but it, it does help you to be able to maybe understand um, what's causing it and kind of know how to help in that situation or maybe what they like um, when they're feeling a certain kind of way. So great question. Definitely check out um, anxiety thermometer for kids. Um, or if you have a therapist or your kiddo has a therapist, see if your um, you know, child's therapist or your kiddo's school, if they have any of those, because th they, they should. Okay. Sounds good. Awesome. So when we get up to, you know, above a five, like I was saying, like a six or a seven, we do tend to have our, our physical symptoms. Like I was saying, I was really snappy with my brother. Um, you know, I, my face tends to get really hot. I, my heart rate goes up. I can't think very well. Um, those things, you know, does tend to become more, um, prominent. And then I saw some people mentioning panic attacks, right? So mm -hmm. we're getting up to maybe an 80 or a 90 where our anxiety is very, very high. Um, it may not be the highest our anxiety has ever been, but you can be at that 
at that part where you're um, about to have a panic attack um, or even having a panic attack at that time. So a seven, eight, and nine, those are all really elevated. Those are all really high numbers. It doesn't have to just be at a 10 to be at a panic attack. That is just like the worst anxiety you've ever felt, um, like the highest of the high. Okay. So again, um, when we are at like a seven, eight, nine, ten, our bodies take a lot longer to process the stress. It takes a lot longer for our bodies to calm down. It takes so much longer for things to kind of um, get back to normal. And so making sure that we are noticing these things and trying to take care of them, which is the next part of the, the worksheet. So when you're at a zero, um, that can be a number of things. So what do you like to do? Like when you're just hanging out with the family and just relaxed and kind of nothing's going on, what is your favorite thing to do? I like to watch videos of bad drivers <laughs> on YouTube. Not, are they funny bad drivers or? Yes, they're, they're, they're funny. They're the, the, the ones that are like, you know, a 50 point turn you know, to turn around, mm -hmm. things like that. I love watching those kind of videos. I, I love watching um, like talent videos, seeing people's amazing, especially singers. Oh my goodness. You see someone up there and you just hear an amazing voice or something real emotional. Um, those are things that I really enjoy. When I'm relaxed and I'm calm, I like to, you know, to do that. If, if it's like, you know, I just got a little bit of time. If I have longer mm -hmm. time, go do something with the kids. I want to make memories with them, as many yeah. memories as possible. Um, so that, you know, when, when, when I'm gone in the way, way down the road, they'll be talking to their kids like, Oh, me and your grandpa used to do this. They got all those great memories. Okay. So it's super important to know what those things are when you're at like a zero one, two, because these are ways that help us, um, stay kind of recharged and maybe help the other things in our life not seem so stressful. So this is like that preventative kind of maintenance where making sure you are taking the time out to care for yourself, just like you don't miss your lab appointments, just like you don't miss your, um, if you're on dialysis, you don't miss your dialysis or doctor's appointments. This is a non-negotiable. This is a part of your health. And so those things like spending time um, watching bad drivers, spending time with your kiddos, those things are very, very important to do um, very, very consistently to help kind of dampen the rest of the thermometer. Um, any questions on that? No, and I'll tell you, when I watch those videos, those bad drivers, it makes me feel good. Cause I'm like, oh, I can do a three point turn. No problem. Give me a, a Suburban, I can do it. <laughs> I cannot. That <laughs> I like, I like really cute dog videos and I watch those with my kids a lot. Um, we also watch really funny cat videos. There's just something so calming and soothing about watching a cat ride a Roomba or, you know, a dog getting its head stuck somewhere. I don't know why. It's just absolutely hysterical. It's so, amazing what YouTube can, can provide for us. Absolutely. Help us relax, <laughs> feel good, enjoy, kind of disconnect in a way, you know, that we're, mm -hmm. we're watching it online. <laughs> Most definitely. And I remember, you know, um, someone had brought up their faith and their connection um, to their higher power and their spirituality. And so that's one of those great things that you can also do. Um, reading in general is, is great. Um, listening to music, um, going for walks, you know, making sure you are um, taking time to just be, not to do anything, not to be anything to anyone, but just to do something that's that's for yourself. So when we're getting up to um, maybe a three or a four, so where you are saying that you're waiting for your labs, right? Mm -hmm. You've got a couple days where you're not gonna be able to get any of the information. How do you, how do you wanna handle that? So not how are you currently handling that, but how would you like to handle that um, to maybe just kind of bring some of that down. Um, so that way it's not taking over your mind. It's not making you more irritable, making you shoot up um, to the higher levels. Is there anything? You know, I just realized I, I spoken about this before what I do when like life is just feels like it's too much and I mm -hmm. need a break from it. 
and I don't know if anyone remembers, but I wash and wax my car. It is so because I love having a clean car, and mm-hmm. you, it's not easy to wash and wax a car. It takes a lot of attention, and I forget about everything. I'm disconnected mentally. Um, I don't worry about my my labs. Uh, I just did this like two weeks ago. <laughs> and I was like, you missed the Miyagi the situation. Yeah, I, I had waxed my car like a week <laughs> before. And I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm going to just wax it all again. And I just did it all. <laughs> and that is, I, and I didn't, I, I know that it's my stress reliever mm-hmm. is to do that because then you're, you know, it looks so good. It's shiny. It's clean. I can see that, that I've accomplished something. Um, yes. And it's the feel. It's just, oh, everything. You touch the door handle, you feel that. So for weeks, I'm still enjoying it. Uh, but that's what I do. When, you know, if there's a weekend and I'm waiting for my labs, I will get out my hose. I have a special hose, everything. I have all the right stuff and I'll set it all up and I will wash and wax my car. And for a couple hours, I am super happy and Mm -hmm. carefree. That's a great example of using distraction um, because you are giving yourself something that you know how to do, right? You're not having to learn something new. You're not having to um, really go through a lot of problem solving because you know how to do this. And so you can kind of, I don't want to say like turn your mind off per se, but you're able to get out and physically move, which is great for anxiety. Um, You're outside. So hopefully the weather isn't, you know, super junk um, when you're washing and waxing your car, but you're able to move you are doing something that helps you um, feel accomplished without it having to be something that is is for somebody else. It's entirely for you. So I think that's great. And I will say, what about when it's wintertime, right? So you live in the Midwest and we know the Midwest gets snow. Is there anything that you can do with your car um when it's snowy out if you're not able to i still do that i'll do it inside (laughs) yes i will do it all inside um i am i just absolutely love doing it because of you realize all the shapes of the car that you Mm. thought you knew but you don't and it's so engulfing but it takes no effort Yes. to do it and the results mm-hmm. are instantaneous i do one little panel and then i just touch it gently and it's like oh you just feel that smoothness uh, but i'll do it inside and i even have gone to do-it-yourself car washes just to wash my okay. car and i'll take a bucket and mitt and things like that because uh, they've got hot water even in the winter i'll be out there shh, doing it um, it is just so, so relaxing. I know it probably sounds really odd to a lot of people. No. They're like, that's a chore. But for me, it is, it just, the, you're, I'm accomplishing something and I love the way it looks all glassy. Um, and if, if there's, you know, is a spot on there, a little bit of tar or something, I got my chemicals. I'm out there. I'm getting them. I'm doing them. I'm inside. I'm using Q-tips and everything. If, if I paid somebody to do it, they would probably hate it, but it's something that <laughs> I love doing. And, you know, it's just, it is so relaxing and it is my go-to. If someone sees me and you, any of you guys ever drive by and you're like, you see me, cause my car's got my branding all over it. Dad buys TV. You see me out there washing and waxing. Things haven't been going great. Now I, I need yeah. a break. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> And you can say hi. I'll be I'll be all happy and everything because <laughs> I'm in my own world. It's it's mm-hmm. you know what I can control it. I'm sitting here. I'm doing it. I'm going one panel at a time. I plan the order. I'm doing it. I'm in control. That's probably a big part Absolutely. of it. Absolutely, absolutely. And I was just going to say that it is very in the moment. So anxiety is a lot of being in the future. Okay, what are my labs going to say? Um, you know, what happens 
you know, two months down the line when I lose my job or, you know, that kind of thing. So anxiety is very much in the future. And this is allowing you to very much be in the present and to control what you can, especially when there are so many things in life that we can't control, right? So waiting to see, you know, what's going to happen with your insurance, waiting to see, you know, how all the, the moving stuff kind of gets sorted out. You know, there's, there's so many different things that are out of your control and being able to be in that present moment and control like what you can um, very much allows you to feel um, much more grounded, much more centered. So that's a fantastic example. Yeah. Oh, it is funny. It all clicked as we're talking. It's like we're having our own little therapy session here. Uh, it's all clicking in my mind. And when you were starting to, I was like, oh, I know what I do. I, I know how I handle this. Mm -hmm. Watch and wax my car. <laughs> yeah, Sydney Absolutely. says she likes cutting grass. Hey, Sydney, come on over. I got a lot of yard, 0.7 <laughs> acres. <laughs> I hate cutting grass. But my wife, it relaxes her. She doesn't want mm -hmm. a riding lawnmower. She gets out there, puts on her music, goes with the, her, her playlist, and walks the lawnmower and mows the yard. There's the smell of the grass, there's physical movement, um, you know, being outside and getting fresh air. There's those delicious lines you get when you go back and forth with a lawnmower that are just so satisfying. You know, there's many, many things that you can appreciate about that. Um, so it is quote unquote productive to cut the grass, but it is very much going at your own pace, your own time um, and, and doing it for you. So. I love that. That's fantastic. Yeah, she, she um, agrees push mower. <laughs> push mower. I can't, oh, when we say push mower, we mean electric or do we mean the old school type where you have to go back and forth? You know, ours talking is, about the ours is old, old school. Ones. I don't know what hers is. The batteries are too heavy if you have a hill for an electric one. So you have, so your wife does the, the one where it's just the metal, there's no engine or motor it, in it. Is that what no, you're No, 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 no. There is a motor. There is an engine on it yeah, and it so. does rotate the wheels. You know, it's got okay. four wheel drive, all four wheels spin all by themselves, but you're squeezing it for how fast you want it to go. Yeah. And you're just, you're just steering it. That's all you're, you're walking and steering. You're getting in a lot of steps. Absolutely. And being productive. And being productive. <laughs> Um, okay. So it seems like that makes sense to everybody kind of where we're at there. Um, as we start getting up to a higher level where maybe we are starting to have like physical symptoms happening, um, there are a lot of really cool things that you can do and there's science behind it. And we could talk forever about the science. Um, but when our anxiety is really, really high uh, or we have anxiety in the body, it's, it's, again, trying to find a way to be safe. Um, a lot of times we step out of our body, we're not focusing, we're focusing on the future and all the things that need to get done that we can't control. Mm -hmm. So a really, really great one is ice. So grabbing ice out of your uh, refrigerator or your freezer rather, um, holding it in your hands over your sink um, so you don't slip and fall and just holding onto the ice as long as you can. That's a great one because it, um, it slows the heart rate down. It makes you focus on what's happening to your body and it allows you to come back into your own mind, into your own center. And it actually shuts off all of those, um, or, or, uh, simmers down all of those like racing thoughts or any of the physical symptoms that you're having. So you can hold ice, um, you can, you know, put like an ice pack on your chest right here. Um, you, I don't know if you've ever seen people in movies where they go rinse their faces, yeah. um, in the bathroom. That's a good one. Um, I like to, after a long day where maybe I'm holding on to some stress, I like to take a, uh, I like to rinse off of the cold shower, like as cold as you can stand it. It can be two seconds. Um, there are a lot of benefits to just getting near some cold water. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's one. Another good one, and again, um, this is something to maybe chat with with your doctor um, since it is, you know, a dietary thing. One thing I recommend to my clients a lot is to have sour candy. So like uh, lemon heads or those warheads, um, anything that is like really, really sour because that does the same thing as the ice. 
And my clients will tell you that they doubt me when I tell them to do this or to try this, but it absolutely works. And so I recommend keeping, um, again, talk to your dietitian and your doctor, but I recommend keeping um, some like lemon heads or some very, very sour candy in your bag, um, maybe in a bowl near your desk, that kind of thing. That absolutely will help you check back in with your body. I don't know how anxious I can be when I'm worried about, you know, a warhead or a, a lemon head being in my mouth. So now, now, try now, that I'll tell you, have you had a warhead? Cause they are nothing Not like a lemon head. You're going Not from one, one, one extreme to the, you know, lemon head, easy warhead. Woo. <laughs> they are two different levels. The, I don't know war, uh, the warheads. They just have a weird funky taste for me. Um, I like the taste of lemon. So that's also, beneficial, but you can do both. I do know, um, I've heard people also using like peppermints. Um, I haven't had any of my clients use that and I haven't tried that myself. Um, so you can also try that, but definitely give the sour candies a try, especially when you're getting higher up, um, in your anxiety le levels. Another great one is tapping and you can get online and you can research, um, tapping it's um, something that a lot of like uh, trained professionals use um, to help their clients have like a way to ground. And so um, tapping again is like just very rhythmic. It's going to different points of the body, like the chest, um, some, some parts of the hands behind the ear. Um, there's tons and tons and tons of stuff on the internet around that where it, um, it helps you have that rhythm, helps you check back in with the body. Um, and gives you the ability to, to focus on the self. Same thing with deep breathing, all that kind of stuff. Um, taking a walk, distraction can also be a good one. Um, trying to think, there was another one that I, I often recommend. Um, drinking water, if you are able to have water. Um, if you're not able to have water, yes, if, if you're on like a, um, a restriction for that, um, you know, obviously making sure that you're paying attention to that, but just making sure you're getting what you need, because if you're sweating and if your heart's racing, you know, that, that is going to dehydrate you. So just making sure that you are, um, keeping up with that too. Well, Any I of these seem like when you Go We're coming up at the top of the hour, Lana, <laughs> I'm trying to get it all in, be succinct, be helpful. Um, but does any of this like seem like something that you would maybe want to try? Oh yeah. And you know what? I, I have no problem public speaking. I can get up in front of the biggest group. No problem. But I know a lot of people, it, it can be challenging to get up there. And I've seen so many people they'll go and they'll get some assistance for how to get up in front of people. Mm -hmm. And I've seen them like tapping, tapping. Mm -hmm. you know, before, or if they have something in front of them, they'll be tapping behind it. So you don't see it. Um, and I just realized why they're probably doing that is that's probably something to help them keep that number down into the, the part where they're not overly anxious and they can continue and deliver their, uh, their, their speech. Absolutely. And it's really important that you have multiple things to do because you may not have access to um, lemon heads in the moment, right? Or you may not even be able to have lemon heads or something that reduces your stress is listening to Metallica or something one day, but maybe Metallica is not helping you feel calmer another day. So having a number of different ideas and options is really important because it may not always be accessible, may not be feasible. You may not be interested in that. It may be winter. And so going to the beach as your stress relief is not a possibility, you know, that kind of thing. So, um, <clears throat> so I recommend when you're completing this to save it somewhere, um, and bring it with you. So that way, if your anxiety does shoot up, um, you can have it as a screenshot on your phone. And so you're not having to think, okay, what can I do? What can I do? What can I do? Because you've already gotten it written down. Very good. Well, we are at the top of the hour and I feel like I got a nice little a therapy session here. We talked a lot about my my amazing car cleaning and waxing skills. <laughs> but I'll tell you, anybody I, out there, it is amazing how therapeutic that can be. Something like that, that it does not sound fun, but if I'm stressed, let me go get my stuff. Let me go take care of my car. 
and I'm going to come back stress-free and uh, I won't be nipping at people anymore. Mm-hmm. We like a happy James. We yeah, like a calm we <laughs> All right. So we it have a link to your website where people can learn more. And this has been a great talk. And maybe at our next conversation, you will be the one who will have moved and have a new home like I just finished doing. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Fingers crossed. All right. Thank you so much, Lana, for being here. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. And I don't know when the next video will be. I got to get all the schedule reworked with everyone, kind of ramping things up here. But it'll be not too long, and I'll post it on dadvicetv.com as well as the Facebook channel. And thank you all again, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye, everyone.